sickness. Read. And every plague. And every plague. Read. Which is not written in this book of this law, uh -huh. them will the Lord bring upon thee. So God said all the diseases and all the plagues that ain't written in the book of this law. You don't read about emphysema in here. You don't read about uh, skin, uh, 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 gum cancer or throat cancer. No. You don't read about AIDS. That's all man made. No, that's that's a that is a punishment of us breaking God's laws. That listen, cigarettes, making cigarette, uh, putting a cigarette together with a tobacco leaf. Yes, that is man made, but it goes against God's laws, so we're being punished for it. You understand? Read it again. Read that. Also, every sickness. Every sickness. Why do you think? Why do you think there's new STDs coming out? Why do you think that is? Because God says don't commit adultery. God says stop being a fornication. God says God says do not be a sodomite. But what do our people do? They fall into all manner of mischief, and they end up in what? With diseases, with plagues in their bodies. And because of sin. Now, now. Hey, quick, quick, quick question. Hey, hey, brother, brother, I got a question for you really fast. Does, uh, now, I want y'all to hear this. Does, give me Leviticus 28, I mean, uh, 26 and 18. Now listen, does, the, do the sicknesses and the plagues hit everybody in the world? Does it hit everybody? Yeah, everybody gets it. Everybody. everybody, but who gets it worse? The blacks, Hispanics, and natives. Now, now, let's see if that's in the Bible. Let's see if the Bible says we gonna get it worse. Read. Read. Leviticus chapter 26, verse 18. And if he will not yet for all this hearken unto me. He said, if you, you Israelites, y'all listening? Y'all listening right here? He said, if you Israelites don't listen to what I say, if you don't keep my commandments, read. Then I will punish you seven times more. How much? Seven, seven times more. So he gonna get us worse than he get everybody else. And that proves even more that we are these Israelites, according to the Bible. Yes. It's not these fake Jews calling themselves Jews. My brother right here, hold on, hold on, really fast, come on closer. Come on up, you gotta hear this, brother. I know, but this, you ain't gonna hear this nowhere else, brother. Come on now. Hey, sister, listen, you gotta say, what's your name? What's your name, sis? Miriam, what's your name, my brother? Malik, you got Jose, Miriam, Malik. Huh? Bianca and? Juliet. Juliet, okay. So all y'all gotta understand who we are in the Bible. God says that he's gonna punish the Israelites. So my brother, let me ask you, what is, now the sister just learned, you're from the tribe of what? What tribe are you from, sis? Remember? Zebulon, of the nation of Israel. You're from the tribe of Benjamin. What tribe are you from, my brother? Come look at the sign. You're from the tribe of Simeon? Okay, and you? You're from the tribe of Simeon. So. Now, give me Deuteronomy 10, verse 12. Now, what do we got to do now that we know that we Israelites? We, we, we are the Israelites. We got to come together, right? Okay. So, 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 so let me ask you. Can we come together and, and I believe in only keeping the Ten Commandments and he believes we got to keep all of it? Can we come together like that? So how do we got to come together? We got to come together under the banner of the Bible, under Christ, under the whole thing. Now let's read. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12. Read. And now, Israel. And now. Now, Brother Malik. I see you trying to sneak off, Brother Malik. But now, Brother Malik, what does the Bible say? What, read. What does the Lord thy God require of thee? So what does God require of you, Malik? You, Jose. You, Miriam. You, Juliet. You, Bianca. What does the Bible require of you? Read. But to fear the Lord thy God. Now what does it mean to fear God? Believe in him? What does it mean? Psalms 119, 120. Hold that. What does it mean to fear God? Wisdom. Wisdom, okay, I like that. We're moving in the, in the right direction. Who, 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 grew up, who grew up with both their parents here? Or had, had, had authority figures over them? Okay, so when your parents, did your parents love you? Okay, but when you messed up, what did they do? They whooped your ass, That's right? right? And, then, and, and, and when you walked in the house, they said, "Boy, didn't I tell you? To, didn't I tell you to get? Didn't I tell you to take that trash out? What's the first thing you do? You jump up like, oh shoot! I don't want to get a whooping. I don't want to get a whooping. You fear your parents. Now God gave us specific instructions, 
and we are getting our asses whooped right now. Because, because of why? Because we don't fear God. If you fear God, you're going to do what he said to do. Now let's see what fear is. Read. Psalm chapter 119, verse 120. My flesh Tremble it for fear of thee. Now, Brother Malik, you got to learn how to fear God. Sister Bianca, y'all got to stop smoking them, them uh, uh, little uh, whatever it is y'all got and throw them things away because that's going to bring uh, the plagues upon you that we just read about. Now, when you do that, you show that you don't fear God and you don't understand God. Let's read what fearing God is one more time. Read. My flesh Tremble it for fear of thee. You hear that, Sister Miriam? He said, my flesh trembles for fear of thee. Y'all ever been so afraid your flesh trembles? But are, do our people fear God that way? No, they say, God knows my heart. I can do whatever. God knows me. Do, sister, but, but people say that, right? You have to obey. You have to obey the word. Now, Sister, sister you're right. You're right. You are right. That is what fearing God is. Now, what the Lord requires, now go back to Deuteronomy 10. So read that. Listen, listen to this. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12. And now, Israel, what does the Lord thy God require of thee? What does God require? Hey, hey, my brother right here. What does God require of you? Do you know what God requires of you? Stay humble, be loyal, be faithful. Okay, let's read that in the Bible. Do you believe in the Bible? Gotta go, bro. I'm I'm see, now, see that right there? Read that. See, see they, they, they say stuff that sounds good, but it ain't biblical. Read on. What does the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God. You got to fear him. You got to fear his judgments. You got to fear getting your butt whooped by your heavenly father. That's what you got to fear. Read on. To walk in all his ways. To do what? Walk in all his ways. To walk in all of his ways. Read. And to love him. And to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. So how do you love God? How do you serve him with all your heart and all your soul? How do you do that? Okay, you repent and you live according to the banner. I like what you're saying. There's one word, there's, there's a one phrase you can say. God know, right? Uh-huh. God knows my heart. But how am I going to know God? I just said that. I just said Christians always say God knows my heart, right? But He does. He, you're right, you're right, sister. But listen, what what you got? Okay, what I want to say, I am from I am not from Puerto Rico. I'm from my mother. Right. But in my school, back home in Barbados, we learn what the Bible is school. But but how do you love God? That's the question. The question is, huh? Can you can you give God a hug? Can you can you send them flowers? Can you say, hey God, we love you? Uh, to God from Jose. Can you do that? Right. Now let's read. How do you love him? Read. Read that last part again. The last part of that verse. And to love him and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. To keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes which I command thee this day. So how do you love God? Right. Keeping the commandments. Keeping the commandments. Yes. That's keeping now, the now, 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 that keeping the laws. Right. Exactly. Law. His, his laws, law. not man's. His God's law. laws. But if man's laws, if, if man's laws don't violate God's laws, you keep the laws of the land. But you want to keep God's laws. So, sister, hey, sister, right here, I got a question for you. Now, give me Leviticus 13 and verse 30. So, I want to ask you this question. You said God knows my heart. We have to. The only way you're going to know uh, God's going to know your heart is if you read the Bible and have it inside of you. Right? That's what you said. Right? Leviticus 13. And we're going to read verse 30. I want you to listen to this. Yeah, start from 29. Read that. Leviticus chapter 13. 13 verse 29. If a man or woman have a plague upon the head or the beard. So this is going into a plague. Now, sister, is the plague a good thing or a bad thing? It's a bad thing. We just read about the plagues that will come upon us that are not written in this law, right? So God says that it'll be upon a man and a woman, or a woman, that this plague, read on. Then the priest shall see the plague, and behold, if it be in sight deeper than the skin, and there be in it a yellow thin hair. A what? A yellow thin hair. So if it be in it a yellow 
thin hair. Now I got a question. What is yellow hair? What is yellow hair? Blonde. Because she said her hair. Huh? You said what? She said her hair. Your hair? Okay, so listen to this really quick. Do you believe in the Bible? Yeah. Okay. So listen, listen to what God says. Read it again from the top. Read it again from the top. Oh, hold on, hold on, sister. I want you to hear this really fast. You got three minutes. Listen. Read. Leviticus chapter 13, verse 29. If a man or a woman have a plague upon the head or the beard. Have a what? A plague upon the head or the beard. God doesn't call it cute. He calls it a plague. What? He says that is an abomination. What? Read on. Then the priest shall see the plague. And behold, if it be in sight deeper than the skin, uh -huh. and there be in it a yellow thin hair. Or blonde hair. Blonde is the French word for yellow. Yeah. Read. Then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. Un what? Unclean. Unclean. It is an unclean thing. Why? The Lord gave us color in our hair. He gave us, uh, our, our hair is lively. It curls up. It reaches the sky. It's not dead and flat like dog hair. We got we got hair like sheep's wool or close to it. And God did not give us that color hair. That is a defect. You are unclean if you have that. So if you if you if you turn your hair that color unnaturally, give me Proverbs 331. If you turn your hair like that unnaturally, then you're doing what? What are you doing? If you turn your hair like that unnaturally. Right. Now listen to this. Read. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 31. Envy thou not the oppressor. Now, what does God say? What does God say right here? Read it again. Envy thou not the oppressor. He says, Envy thou not the oppressor. Don't envy the oppressor. Now, who what people? Hey, hey, sisters right here. Brothers right here. What sisters or well, what people have? Blonde hair. White people. So when you turn your hair blonde, who are you envying? Read it again. Envy thou not the oppressor. You are envying your oppressor. When you put the blonde in your hair. Y'all never heard that in the Bible before, huh? You never heard that, sis? Now look, you might not have known. But the Bible says not to put blonde in your hair. Right. You envy the oppressor when you do that. Right. Read that, read it again. Envy thou not the oppressor. Did you hear that, young sister? Hey, young sister right there, you hear that? You got to learn who you are, sis. On that fly, you're going to learn that you're an Israelite. And you must keep God's commandments. And you must turn back to who you are as an Israelite. Stop envying the oppressor. God says, envy thou not the oppressor. And what? And choose none of his ways. So when he when he has that yellow hair and your eye and your hair is naturally brown, don't turn yours into into a different one. Y'all hear me right here in the front? Y'all hear me? So so the, so when he has those colored eyes and you got regular brown eyes, don't go find those stupid contacts and put them in to change the color of your eyes. Don't because you're envying him. You're envying the people that did this to you. Now, sister, would it be right? For you to envy the people that did this to you, you should you walk around and and be like them and want to be like them? So why you put that in your hair? You gotta understand they have give me give me wisdom of Solomon thirteen and three. They have taught you that the image of beauty is them. They taught us that. That's why you have our people in Barbados and different places. That, that go around and they 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 lighten their skin. You hear that, sis? They they, they, they they bleach their skin to try to look like them. Look at, hey, hold on, hold on. Sammy Sosa. Sammy Sosa looks crazy as hell. He looks like a ghost. If he was to walk in my house, I'd probably drop kick him. Because he looks scary as hell. You know what I'm saying? He's not supposed to look like that. Sammy Sosa envied his oppressor and bleached his skin, took all the godly pigment out. Now listen to this, sis. Watch what the image of beauty is. Read that. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 13, verse 3. With whose beauty, if they being delighted, took them to be gods, huh? let them know how much better how much better the Lord of them is. For the first author of beauty, the first author of beauty, which is God, who created who? Adam and Eve, right, right. and they were both what? Black people. Right, right, right. 
So read that again. With whose beauty, if they being delighted, took them to be God, let them know how much better the Lord of them is. For the first author of beauty, the first author of beauty, read, had created them. Had created who? Created them. God is the first author of beauty. You understand? Hey, sister. Sister, don't get taken away. Sister Mary. Sister Mary, don't get taken away from the word. Listen to the word of God. You got to understand that the, your, your beauty, the way that the Lord made you, made your hair brown and coarse. That is beautiful to God. When you go and you take another person's uh, another, how another person looks, and you want to add that to your in your hair and your and to make yourself look beautiful, that's actually spitting in God's face, right. who created you to look a certain way, right. and said this is perfect. Right. When he when he made you, he said he said this is good. When, when he made you, brother Jose, he said this is good. Right. You understand? Shalom, Shalom. Hey, my brother, my brother. So, so listen, listen, listen. I got you. I got you. Yeah, but look, you gotta uh, uh, check out that flyer, bro. All right, you, you gotta you gotta come and congregate, bro. You, you know too much. You know too much, my brother. What's up? Yahshua, Jesus. Okay. I can. Uh -huh. Salvation is of the Jews. Of the Jews. That's right. That's right, brother. So look, Lord's will you repent. All right. So let's go. Let's go back to Deuteronomy 28. Hello, Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.